David. We appreciate your talents today. Well, I'm going to proclaim something with me as we begin. Let's get some energy going within mind and thought. And that is, I invite you to say this with me. Every day and every way, I'm expanding my consciousness. Say it with me. Every day and every way, I am expanding my consciousness. Every day and every way, I am growing the soul within. Every day and every way, I am growing the soul within. Every day and every way, I am remembering my destiny. Every day and every way, I am remembering my destiny. Every day and every way, I am achieving my highest and best. Every day and every way, achieving my highest and best. That every day includes today. That's right. That includes this now, this moment. This for achieving your highest and best. This is your moment for raising your consciousness and growing the soul. This is your moment to remember destiny. This is your moment right here, right now. We are achieving this highest and best journey together as we welcome this experience within our hearts and our lives. And to do that, I have to ask you this. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If our highest and best is what we proclaimed right here and now, raising consciousness is ours right here and now, uh, the, the ability to expand the soul here right now, in what are you waiting for? Waiting for something to happen sometimes puts us in that place where we are in the someday syndrome. Someday. You know, like all of those husbands who've turned to their spouses and said, Honey, uh, I'll attack that honey-do honey -do list uh, when I have some time, someday. And of course, the universe is giving a lot of those husbands lots of time. And they realize, oh, wait a minute, let's hold on to the someday syndrome. I'm not ready to do those tests yet. I'm not ready to fulfill them all right now. And so we get stuck in that someday approach. Too many are waiting to manifest the miracles of day-to-day -day living. Someday will manifest. Someday will manifest. Too many are waiting for that someday I'll walk in faith on that day. We're postponing it. We're saying, you know, it sounds really good. I like it. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'd love to walk in faith. I'd love to manifest great things. I'd love to believe for it. Someday. And we get caught up in that syndrome. And along with that, so many of our people are waiting someday for heaven. I want to invite you to stop waiting for heaven. Stop waiting for heaven to be experienced when you die. Stop looking for heaven somewhere out there in the universe as if it's some sort of physical destination we're going to. But start now with living the heaven within you. No more waiting. Heaven now. Claiming it right now to the fullest. For what heaven is, is a state of consciousness, a state of mind, a state of thinking in which the soul and the body are in harmony with the divine mind. That's what heaven really is. When we come into complete harmony, the mind, the body in a sense of unity with the wonderful essence of all that is God, the divine intelligence, the divine wisdom, the divine insight, come in alignment with it and allow our thoughts and our body to reflect that we are one with the divine. That's heaven. Heaven is this wonderful place of harmony where all things are working together in unity in such beauty. One of the hardest things for people to do is to recognize that heaven is a condition of mind. We've kind of grown up with, one day I'll go to heaven, or I'll see you in heaven, or when I die, I'm going to heaven. And we think about all of that without reflecting any kind of awareness of heaven here and now, someday, but no, heaven here and now, right here in this moment. Jesus evidently experienced the all kinds of difficulty in trying to explain this very truth, trying to get across that heaven was here and now, because he began to share all kinds of parables and comparisons in teaching people over and over and again, this is what heaven is like. Heaven is like unto this and heaven is like unto that. In trying to explain this wonderful consciousness and awareness that we have within our life. Never did he describe heaven as a place or as a destination, or something that we're going to later on, other than it being a state of consciousness, 
a state of mind, a state of awareness, a state within us, within our thinking that we are in complete alignment with the divine. Because it's there that we experience this perfect peace. It's there in that moment that we experience this eternal joy. It's there that we experience, because we're not experiencing something from the outside, it's happening from the inside out. So it's what we embrace within that unfolds outward and heaven wants to come on out. Heaven wants to have a coming out experience out of your life. This is this consciousness and awareness within you. Today we read a beautiful text from the book of Romans chapter 14 verse 17 that says the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. I mean, it's the kingdom of God is not five senses. It's not about touch that you're going to touch the kingdom of God that you're going to touch heaven. It's not about the seeing heaven. It's not about tasting heaven, hearing angels in heaven. Uh, it's not about all those kind of things. It is this. It's right thinking. It's our consciousness. It's righteousness, which is right thinking. And it is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, in that which is within us. This is describing heaven. So why are we waiting? Why are we waiting for heaven? Why are we putting off to thinking someday? How about we sing when we all get to heaven? What a day of rejoicing that will be. And that day is now. That day is here. This day is this moment. We're all in this heavenly consciousness right here and now. And when we are in that place, what a day of rejoicing that is will be when we all come to this full awareness that our thoughts, our consciousness, that which we think and focus on, our very thoughts are all in alignment with God. There is a divine unity. There is a sense that the infinite power of presence of God is flowing in me, through me, and around me. It's right here and now. It's not someday. It's to be experienced in this moment. Because this is the place. This is the beginning of the discovery of the creative power within our lives. And I invite you to make that discovery today. I have the creative power within me. Say that with me. I have the creative power within me. The power of God that created this universe, it dwells in you. And it's waiting. It's waiting for you to wake up to the knowledge that this someday is today. This is your moment. Today is your day of creating the world that you so desire. Not postponing it, not thinking, well, someday I'll live in a realm of great abundance and prosperity and joy and peace. Why not today? Why are we putting that off? Because this is our now, not our someday. It's meant to be experienced in this moment. And when you awaken to this, the someday syndrome is changed to this is my now norm. I love that. My norm. This is my now norm. This is the way I live. Wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning knowing that heaven is here, here and now, and I'm experiencing into the fullness because my thoughts, my consciousness is centered on the divine. And there is a oneness, no separation between God and I, feeling this complete unity. Uh, there is a new norm to be experienced then. There's a saying out there that says, you know, I'll move heaven and earth. Speaks of great determination, doesn't it? I'm going to move heaven and earth to get this done. I'll do everything within my power to make this happen when we say that. In faith, in the power of belief, we move the heart and the mind. We move heaven and the physical world to us. We move our thoughts and the physical world responds to that which we're thinking that which we hold in consciousness, that which we hold in our awareness. When we say, this is the day the Lord hath made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. We're holding in consciousness. This day, everything in it, God has made, and I'm rejoicing and I'm happy in everything that this day unfolds for me. So we understand this. We must understand that the first thing we have to do is move heaven, not a day, not a place. And awareness. Let's move that awareness. Let's shift our thinking. Make a shift in the way we look at our world and move it into the realm of awareness of God in me, through me, and around me at all times. We must move that consciousness and move our thinking and move the awareness. What it is is actually to activate 
that wonderful divine presence within us. Activate. How do we activate it? How do we activate it? Well, it's by saying it, by claiming it in spoken word, by giving voice to that which you believe to be true. And what happens when we speak something? Well, that vibrational frequency of the thought is now activated and it's released into the universe. It's released in the universe for the law to work upon and to bring about. So where is this heaven again? Where is it? Well, that heaven, let's just say, if you're gonna build a kingdom and you wanted to build a kingdom that was eternal, where would the greatest place be? Would you say somewhere maybe in Asia, in Europe, somewhere in the deserts of America? The problem is that each one of these physical locations could be destroyed over time. And what would happen to your kingdom? The kingdom would be lost. Uh, building a physical kingdom in some physical location might mean that, well, some people might never find that location. They may never find where that kingdom is. But the kingdom of God is built within the heart and mind, in our own soul and spirit. It's within. And this place is eternal. The kingdom of God is available to you. And it can be found within, for it is accessible. The consciousness, the divine awareness, it's within each and every one of you. And it can be found, and it's very accessible when we just simply awaken our spirit to this, activate it, begin to awaken our consciousness. The kingdom of heaven is within. Einstein discovered the secret energy and power caught within the atom. And Jesus, our master teacher, knew the creative power of your life and mine. Now, it is knowing that this, that we can find the key to our success, our highest potential. Now, we can't move anything if we don't first realize this power exists and that it's within us we don't realize that heaven is within us and the power of all of heaven is there. We must create this attitude of complete acceptance in our own mind. Acceptance. I fully accept it. I accept this is true. I'm wholly convinced. I believe it is so, we might say over and over again. This is my final answer. If you're playing uh, who wants to be a millionaire, well, who wants to live in heaven? This is my final answer. I believe, I am confident, this I know to be true, and I speak it with finality, no more questioning. For the law of the universe, the law of sowing and reaping begins to operate then on this. The earthly plane of the physical now comes into alignment with what we have accepted, and it will unfold. You know, it's this simple. It's no different from saying, you want a garden? You want to plant a garden? Well, then you go out and plant one. What do you do? You buy the seed. And, what, this little thing, I'm gonna get a garden on this. Little, this little seeds, this, I'm gonna have a, a garden that's gonna feed uh, the hungry. I'm gonna plant those seeds in, in the ground. And what happens? Nature takes over and produces the plant. This is the work we do in our spiritual journey. We say, I want this to live in heaven, the realm of consciousness, the realm of awareness of the divine, perfect peace. I want to be in alignment. I'm going to plant that seed in my garden right now. And what happens? The universe takes over. The universe kicks in and begins to unfold your highest and best. This is the abundant life Jesus spoke about. It's there for each and every one of us. It's as if God said to the hen, Sit on the egg. Go ahead, honey, sit on the egg. And the hen does it with confidence. Well, it's just nature. And it's how the hen is made, how the, uh, the little chick comes to be in existence. It's if the universe is saying, just relax, follow in alignment, just do your part. Open your mind in consciousness, like the universe to the hand, just sit on the egg and the rest will be taken care of. It is when we hold in consciousness, I am one with the divine. I am one with the divine. I am experiencing this power and work within my life. I'm expanding my soul. I'm raising my consciousness. What we're doing is planting 
speed. And what happens? The universe takes over and unfolds, brings forth and manifests. And it's our true nature to do this very same thing, to live in this kind of confidence that the hen would have of sitting on the egg, knowing that the law of the universe, the divine nature, is responding to our affirmative word, our belief, that which we voice to be true, that which we're expressing and putting voice to as we say, this I know to be my truth. You see, this truth is at work all around. And yet we say, can it be true for us? How wonderful to realize, to awaken to this power in us. Wait, this just seems too true, you might say, too good to be true. As if you think that God, that loving presence and generous, is just maybe not that giving or maybe not that loving. That which we call God, let me tell you this, is eager to meet your need. The infinite intelligence of this universe is ever providing for you. There are far too many passages of scripture for us to ever begin to doubt, to doubt this. This is the truth that we hold dear to our heart. God is not withholding a single thing from you. This brings us back then to the understanding that God is a God of love and great intelligence and knows your need before you even ask. That generosity is there before you even ask. God is the law of all good and that law is moved on and urged on in love. There's an impulsion, a motivating force, a propelling force, a driving force, uh, a moment push, some pressure, some power. That's what we're describing here, that the law of good is unfolding for you. It's not only through love that we find the presence in its greatness and can use the power in its fullness, but love opens the door to that secret chamber within us. And we must use the power of this divine within us affirmatively, affirmatively. That means with confidence not wishy-washy, not wavering, but to use this wonderful power of the divine within us and to speak out in authority with affirmation in the affirmative of each expression. We cannot use it. We cannot use this power when we did not. We cannot use it while our minds are filled with doubts and about things. We cannot use this love unfolding within us when we're questioning and saying, you know, I'm not sure, or I'm not certain. What happens is it diminishes its power. Love is a wonderful feeling, and then we're going to couple it with faith, this wonderful knowing. Feeling and knowing coming together in dynamic expression are that which are a creative force for us. Let me tell you, God is love, and this love has nothing in it that would hurt anything. That's love. God has this love and this uh, God is this love and this love would not hurt anything. This love is always delivering the highest and best because that's God. Love, love. Now think about this. Faith has nothing in it that can deny any good. Faith has nothing in it. When you're saying I'm believing, it has nothing, no in it whatsoever that could deny your highest and best. So faith is saying yes, yes to eternal power, yes to goodness, yes to the unfolding of my health and wealth and my success. Yes, yes, yes. Faith is saying yes, and that yes is drawing in all the good. When we use faith affirmatively, then the power of love, a law of good, operates on our word, and it brings it to our experience. It helps unfold it. This is the truth I'm speaking of that unfolds a whole new day, a new experience, a new life, no longer in fear, no longer troubled by doubts, but a life that is abundant and free. So I invite you now to proclaim, not waiting for heaven, but to live in heaven now by proclaiming this every day and every way, expanding my consciousness every day and every way. I am growing the soul within. Every day and every, every day and every way, I am remembering my destiny. 
Every day and every way I'm achieving my highest and best. Every day includes today, my now. I'm not waiting. I'm living my highest and best right now. This is our proclamation. And when we do, hello, you've arrived in this heaven. You've arrived in this consciousness. I am the divine mind, body and soul, all in complete unity. And so it is. Thank you so much for being with us today.